Miranda, how, how is it going? How's everything uh, going with you? It's good. I've been uh, doing nothing but traveling and cross training and holding seminars ever since my fight. Of course, it's just been a couple of weeks. I've been yeah. letting my eye heal, which was a uh, nice elbow from bottom from Sabino while she pulled my hair to get it done. But, you know, that happened. I'm waiting for that to heal. But today I went back with the team. We had a really nice room full of girls and just got done sparring. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, I, I wasn't on site covering this event, but I don't think the media got to speak with you after that fight, no. right? Because of your because of your yeah. eye. So uh, what was the damage there? To, you know, was it more of just the was there anything internal? I saw some pictures of you. It looked pretty, uh, pretty gnarly there. Yeah, they made me go to the hospital. I definitely didn't want to go to the hospital, but they wanted to check my orbital. And I've had retina surgeries in the past. So everyone was a little bit more concerned than they typically would be. So I went to the hospital, it took forever to check us out, but everything was good to go. I'm actually having another checkup exam today for it, um, but everything seems like it's good to go. And unfortunately, yeah, I didn't get to do the interviews and all that, even though I was looking forward to it. So I guess this is my opportunity. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Let's let's play it out. I mean, how did that win feel to, to kind of come back? You know, you had a couple in a row that didn't go your way. One was controversial and Erin yeah. Blanchfield, you know, credit to her. She did look very good in the fight that you guys had. Mm -hmm. But for you, I mean, how, how good did it feel to kind of prove to yourself like, hey, you know, I can go out there despite maybe I'll have some bumps in the road, but I can go out there and have a, a really good showing and show that I'm, you know, I belong here and I'm, I'm somebody to watch going forward. Yeah, it was definitely an exciting win for me. Um, you could see like the, the submission came out at the end of it, but I tried to work on some new stuff, really work on some new striking things that we were doing. Um, game planning with my coaches was great, even though it was short notice fight. And that was really important to me too, being able to work with those coaches, kind of go out there and show everything that they put into me and come back to the drawing board afterwards. You know, I win a fight and it's not like, okay, I won. I don't need to work on that area anymore. Um, I come back and we analyze that fight. We criticize that fight, every single detail that we can. Where did I go wrong here? Where did I go wrong there? I could have finished a little sooner. I could have held her down a little more. Um, but overall, it was a really good showing of things we had been working on leading up to that fight in between fights. And the Aaron Blanchfield one, like you said, that was a really good fight. I've been working on bottom ground since then in my wrestling for sure. And then the Macy fight, you know, I'd love to run that back at some point. But um, I see it as a couple of years in the future, maybe when we're top contenders. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I guess for you, like, was there any, um, you know, sort of not necessarily doubt, but was there anything that you proved to yourself you feel like in that fight with the performance and going out there and getting a finish like that? Or was was your kind of your faith in your abilities unwavering and it was just a, a product of, of your training? Yeah, I think it was just a product of my training. I've been confident all the way through it. Um, going into face Sabina, I felt like it was a great matchup for me going against a striker, striker, me being more of a grappler, but I felt like I showcased everything in that fight. I was able to show my striking, show my, stri show my grappling, show the cage work, all of it. Uh, but going into that fight, I was very confident. I feel like if you're going into any fight, you need to be, or else it's not going to end up the way that you may think. Yeah, no doubt there. And I guess, uh, you know, that, that, the next question is like, what's next? You know, um, you've, you said you're kind of your eyes healing up. Is there any sort of timeline you want? I saw, uh, you know, you're posting a potential yeah. fight that you're looking, a matchup that you're looking to book. So I guess, uh, why don't you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. You know, I called out Molly, especially after a big win. I had actually asked her prior, like literally messaged her and asked her if she wanted to throw down and she was all for it. Then she got hurt um, a while back and now she had this fight booked and I had mine booked and uh, so I should message her again, but I really want the Molly McCann fight. She's coming off all this hype. I think our fight would be a good one to watch for fans. We both have similar styles. We're both that short, stocky, can get into the firefight if we want to, but have good good uh, brawls as well. And I think that's a really good matchup for both of us. So, you know, if she's listening, let's get in there. Let's do this. I'd love to have it around June. Um, even early July would be okay, but I'm going to be back to full training and ready to go by mid-May. Yeah, I think people would dig that matchup. And I guess what you, you just mentioned that, you know, this is something this is not like you saw her fight in London and then you wanted it. Like this is something that you've thought about for a while. So was it is it a style thing? Is it just like, you know, that you feel like the next right step in the division? Obviously, All of it. you know, I yeah. like Molly. I think she has a good personality for fighting. I think she gets the hype behind her like she should, especially when she fights in her hometown, which is awesome here in America. We don't have that quite as much, you know. But it's still really exciting. And this last one, she was coming off hype, but I had already wanted to fight her just because I see her as this strong brawler. She gets the fans going, and I feel like I do too. So if she wanted to step up and fight, I'd be down for it. And if she doesn't want to, Joanne Calder was my next, my next one I'm eyeing. Yeah, it's funny because sometimes, you know, with fighters, we ask them these questions and they don't have one name, but you have two. You've got your your cast system of, of who yeah. should be next. Uh, 
What did you think of Molly's knockout, by the way, too? Obviously, that kind of uh, went viral and everything. Yeah, I thought her knockout was great. Obviously, it was viral. It was a good knockout. One of those spinning ones. Everybody loves those, you know, especially when they're elbows. Um, but the rest of the fight, I felt like she was fairly technically sound. She did a good job of doing the cage work with her grappling, fighting off somebody who's really long and a Muay Thai striker, kind of like my last opponent, too. Um, I was surprised that she didn't get a finish a couple times, but that just gives credit to the other opponent. I thought she did really well at defending what Molly was throwing at her. Yeah, and you mentioned, uh, you know, I don't want to skip over. You mentioned JoJo as well. She's coming off a loss, uh, but she's always been somebody that's that's a contender. She's in the mix. So do you feel like that those are the, those are the names, like, you know, maybe Molly's not quite to, to JoJo standing in, this, in the rankings, so to speak, or anything, but do you feel like even if the UFC came to you with a, a name like JoJo or somebody right now that you're ready to, to kind of take that dive? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I've been uh, what's called a company girl, right? They yeah. come to me with a name and I say yes. There's never been a time that I've turned down a fight that just wasn't my own opponent or my own uh, teammate, I mean. And that's happened a couple times as well. But I take the fights on short notice. I took the Aaron Blanchfield one on short notice. I took the Sabina Mazza one on short notice. And I like a fight that I want for once. You know, I'd like to go in there and be able to show my skill set about somebody against somebody who I'd like to. And those names right now are Molly McCann and Joanne Calderwood that I'd like the most. Yeah, I, I, I don't blame you there. Do you feel like, do you have any, uh, I don't want to say regrets, but like for a fighter that's trying to establish yourself in the division to take those short notice opportunities, like is it something that you wish you kind of had taken a step back and said, hey, like, you know, maybe I'll do the UFC a favor once, but to continue to do it, do you have any like regrets about that? No, not really. You know, I'm hoping it gets me to where I want to be at the end of it. Obviously, the Aaron Blanchfield one, I feel like that was a bad night for me on top of her just being a very good opponent. And I might have underestimated a little bit. And, you know, I'm not used to losing first rounds. I'm not used to losing any rounds um, from my own perspective. Um, so that was just a rough fight for me. The Macy Barber one, I had plenty of notice for that. Um, and I was looking forward to it. But it was one of those fights that I think they should have pushed down the road a little bit since we were both up and coming prospects. And of course, that decision was controversial. I still think I won that fight. Um, but here, like the two I'm calling out, I think are just logical moves. You know, Joanne is um, ranked, but I don't think rankings really mean anything in this sport anymore. Like there's so many that have multiple losses that are still in the top 10 just because they're fighting other girls that are in the top 10. So they can't like lower their ranking all the way down. Meanwhile, there's girls that are under the top 15, like me, JJ Aldridge, like a few of these girls that are coming up but just aren't ranked because some of the girls are just stuck up there in the top 10 top 15 and they're not fighting the lower fighters yeah and you mentioned june um you know and and we talked about i heard you say something about you know the fans in london they obviously were great and and it really added a new element i think the fighters were all jacked up about it it sounds like more and more now they're going the ufc is going to start hitting even for fight nights uh you know arenas with crowds um would that be if you had your choice? Uh, would you prefer to, to fight in front of some people, some some people cheering you on versus the uh, the apex where everything echoes and it's kind of quiet? I like it because of the exposure that it gives me with the crowd. But there's also the other side of me that loves the apex. If everybody watched my last fight, they'll know like my coach was clear as day. I'm a very coachable fighter and I was able to hear every word he was saying. But I also listen to them no matter where we're at and try my best to like key into their voice. So I love having a crowd. I've only had one that was a crowd. And of course, it was my loss against Aaron Blanchfield, unfortunately. But I'm looking forward to get back into the crowd, really get that full UFC experience that I haven't really gotten to have yet. Yeah, I love it. I don't blame you. I mean, just from I can't speak for you guys, but for just for a fan, even I get more. I, I feel as like it catches my attention more when there's there's crowds. First fight of the night, people cheering. Sure. But uh, Miranda, I really appreciate the time today. Good luck with everything and uh, hope to see you back soon, maybe against one of those names you mentioned. Thank you. I appreciate having me.